Good morning. I want to thank everyone for being with us today. Before we get started, I'd like to recognize some of the people in this room. Apostle Carl White, Victory Christian International Ministries and Southland Ministerial Health Network. Rabbi Shoshona Conover, Temple Shalom of Chicago. Imam Hassan Ali, the Mecca Center. Father Stamatios Esquifus. Am I close? Oh, good. Good. Miracles never cease. All right. Pastor Barry Tidwell, Raynard Shine Baptist Church. Reverend William Grogan, Vicar for Healthcare for the Archdiocese. Dr. Claudia Fegan, who's substituting today, who's our medical director at uh, Cook County Health and Hospital System, who's substituting today for Israel Rocha. Dr. Rachel Rubin, who's co-lead of our Cook County Department of Public Health. Dr. Greg Hewn, who's vaccine coordinator and infectious disease physician for Cook County Health. I'd also like to thank Alicia Moylan, who's our American Sign Language interpreter today. We're coming together today as people of different faiths to encourage all residents of Cook County to get vaccinated against COVID-19. I'm pleased to say that nearly 72%, 72 percent, 72 percent of suburban Cook County residents have gotten vaccinated against COVID. This is an important milestone and one that we should celebrate. However, only 57% of our people have gotten two doses and fewer still have gotten their boosters. These subsequent doses are what makes COVID-19 shots among the most effective vaccines science has ever produced. We also know there are still communities in Cook County which remain largely unvaccinated. So with the holiday season upon us and cold weather about to set in, you couldn't tell it from today, but anyway, um, we're here today to remind folks that it's essential that everyone get their shot. And if you've gotten vaccinated, get your booster. Getting vaccinated is the best way to protect your health and those around you, the people you love, so we can all celebrate safely together. Just last year, the vaccine was only beginning to be administered to essential frontline workers. Actually, um, we were in Strogel Hospital almost exactly a year ago when our first healthcare workers got their shots. And our healthcare workers, of course, are among the most at, at risk to get COVID-19. Last year, many of us spent the holidays separated from our families. It was a very challenging time. And it's thanks to the vaccines that we can now get together more safely. So let's not take vaccination for granted. It will take all of us to beat the pandemic. People of all backgrounds, faiths, ethnicities, getting vaccinated and taking common sense measures to stop the spread of the virus. I'm grateful to all the faith leaders who are with us today to support our efforts to get people vaccinated. We know you're working hard within your communities to encourage others to do the same. Thank you. Now, we have a number of folks who are going to be coming to the microphone, starting with Dr. Claudia Fegan, our Chief Medical Officer. And if you would do me the courtesy of just introducing the next person so that I don't have to bounce back and forth here uh, between the podium, I would be very grateful. Dr. Fegan. Welcome to Cook County Health, and uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I'd like to give special acknowledgement and gratitude um, to our religious leaders, uh, Imam Ali, and to uh, Rabbi Conover, and um, to Father uh, Sifkus, uh, Pastor Tidwell, Apostle White, and uh, Father Grogan. Thank you. And uh, while we come from these backgrounds, we're joining together in solidarity to further our shared goal of getting more people vaccinated against COVID-19. So these leaders serve essential roles in our communities. Their voices um, allay concerns, provide guidance, and a clear path to action for their congregants. Um, they have been steadfast in their support of the vaccination, and we applaud their work and dedication to this effort. Um, with winter on us and the holiday season, uh, for many, we're coming together with one simple message. Uh, time to get your shot is now. Um, COVID-19 cases are continuing to rise. 
Um, we have the uh, new variant that's making its way across the globe. And in order for us to gather safely uh, in celebration and worship, uh, we must get vaccinated. Uh, everyone um, age five and older can get a shot and getting vaccinated not only protects your health, but the health of those around you. Uh, one of the tenets of every religion around the world is to love your neighbor and to take care of those around you, particularly those who are most in need. And so by getting vaccinated, you can embody that principle. You're not only protecting yourself, you're protecting those you care about and the other members of your community. So I'm urging all of Chicago and Cook County residents, please get your shot. Uh, join us in protecting the health of our families, our friends and neighbors against the uh, ongoing insidious uh, pandemic. And so to find a vaccination clinic around you, it's very easy. Uh, just visit myshotcookcounty.com or call 833-308-1988. So um, I just want to say appreciate everyone's participation and encourage everyone to get their shots. Um, and so now uh, Greg Hun, our vaccine coordinator for Cook County Health, will have a few words. All right. Thank you, Dr. Fingen. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Greg Hunan, infectious diseases physician here at Cook County Health and the, the COVID-19 vaccination lead also here at Cook County Health. Well, last week, news broke of a new coronavirus variant called Omicron. And since then, scientists around the world have been working around the clock to find more about this variant. But it is going to take another few weeks to get more of this information. There are still many unknowns and it takes some time to test how this variant actually works. Currently, here is what we do know. Omicron is here in the United States. The first case was reported yesterday in California in a traveler returning from South Africa. And today, just a couple hours ago in Minnesota from a person with domestic travel, which reflects there are likely others here given the global nature of our society. And I cannot stress enough how critical it is to protect yourself get vaccinated, mask indoors, or in crowded outdoor areas with physical distancing when possible. And right now, Delta remains the dominant variant here in Cook County and across the country. And roughly 50 mutations of the original COVID strain exist today, so now more than ever, we need to get this virus under control if we are ever going to get to the end of this pandemic. The longer we allow it to circulate, the greater the possibility for more deadly variants. With all these mutations, we do know that vaccination, including boosters, still remain the best measure to help avoid severe disease and hospitalizations from COVID infection. And other precautions, such as masking, staying six feet uh, apart, and hand hygiene also help in warding off the virus. Testing. Let's talk about testing. Testing, including at-home testing kits, are also helpful, particularly as we gather during the holidays. If you have any symptoms or potential exposure, you should take an at-home test or call your health care provider for instructions and stay home. We believe the new Omicron variant may be more transmissible, so it is critical to protect ourselves, our loved ones, especially those who are immunocompromised, and the greater community at large. I know we were all exhausted, and from this global pandemic as we approach the two-year mark, but we will get through this. We need to remain vigilant in our fight against COVID. The virus looks for opportunities to elude our defenses so it can continue to mutate and we cannot let our guard down. Please, if you have not gotten vaccinated, please go get vaccination today. And if you have gotten the vaccine, get your booster when eligible. The world, our community, our loved ones are counting on us to help us move past this so we, as we embrace the meaning of the holiday season of caring for each other, let's find a renewed energy to pull us through this pandemic. Thank you. I'm going to introduce now Dr. Rachel Rubin, the co-lead uh, for Cook County uh, Public Health. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Hewn, and everybody else that has joined us today. So, so wonderful to have you all here um, for this important uh, message. So, some of this might be repetitive, but I think it's not a bad idea to to hammer home the points that we need to do to keep ourselves safe. The Omicron variant, as we know, is in the United States, and we should act as if it is in Illinois or Cook County already. It will undoubtedly arrive soon enough. Variants like, 
variants like Omicron are created in, carried around, and transferred to others predominantly by unvaccinated people. Until we get to a much higher number of vaccinated individuals, not only countywide, but within each community within the county, we are at risk for the spread of Omicron or the next variant. Vaccination, especially with a booster, protects almost all from getting a severe case of COVID-19 and potentially dying. This is likely to be borne out with the Omicron variant as well. The predominant strain currently is still the Delta variant, and the vaccines continue to work well to prevent COVID as well as complications from COVID if you do contract a breakthrough case, meaning getting a case after you've been vaccinated. There are vaccination sites all over the county and we encourage all individuals five years old and older to get vaccinated now. Vaccination boosters are also available for all adults older than 18 years old, six months after your last Pfizer or Moderna, or two months after the Johnson & Johnson. Aside from getting that first dose or booster shots for those eligible, the best thing we can do is to keep our masks on, particularly inside. Also keeping physically distant, frequent hand washing and avoiding crowds continue to be effective ways to slow the transmission of the virus. If you are unvaccinated, please do not plan on going to family or holiday gatherings. If you choose to be unvaccinated, we ask you to respect and protect others by either getting the dose or staying away from most others if possible. If you are vaccinated, keep masking and physical distancing in public establishments and in gatherings with those other than in your immediate household. If you are not vaccinated, please mask again, of course, can, and continue keeping away from gatherings. You are at much higher risk of carrying and transmitting the virus. Until we have a very low level of the virus circulating in our communities, the unvaccinated carry a dangerous risk to themselves and others, especially those who are at highest risk of complications from COVID, such as the elderly, those with chronic conditions, and those with immune compromise. At the very least, if you're unvaccinated, get tested three to four days before going to an event or gathering with those outside your household, and test again the day before or day of the event. The important thing is to do what we call serial testing, test at least twice. We need to do a better job of testing. If you are traveling, get tested before you leave and when coming home. We need to have more testing to get a more complete picture of how widespread the virus is circulating and to keep each other safe, especially with the emergence of the Omicron variant. It's wise to be concerned and cautious, but there is no reason to panic. The current remediations and recommendations are staying in place for the time being, and we urge everyone to follow them. It is especially important to stay masked and maintain physical distancing indoors unless only in your own household. If we maintain adherence to the current public health mitigation strategies and guidance, we should all have safe and healthy holidays. Um, thank you very much. And next, um, I have the great pleasure of uh, ceding the podium to Apostle Carl White with Victory Christian International Ministries. Thank you, Doctor, and uh, to our President. I want to say that um, getting vaccinated is so important. Uh, as we are finally getting back to having some church um, being able to come, what we've done at the Victory Church, and especially in the south suburbs, we're pushing for every church to have testing uh, at their church so that people can feel confident. As they come, they can uh, get tested. And I heard the slogan that says, uh, if you are five years old and uh, older, get tested, I mean, get vaccinated now. And we want to make sure that we encourage you. Uh, don't listen to all the negativity because we've gotten a lot of positive things that occurred over this past year. And uh, we've uh, come a long ways. And with this new virus, uh, variants coming out, we don't want to go back. So we encourage all of you. Uh, let's work together. Let's work with our health officials and get vaccinated. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to introduce Rabbi Roshana Conva. Did I say it, Conva? Did I do it right? Close. Yes. <laughs> 
And I appreciate it. Thank you. So I like that we started good morning. I think now it might be time to say good afternoon. (laughs) And I'll say that this is the time that the Jewish people gather for Hanukkah. Uh, The word actually comes from dedication, meaning it was a time in which the world for the Jews at that time um, many thousands of years ago, it felt like, t- like that their lives were destroyed through darkness. What they knew to be right was no longer. They no longer had a temple to pray in. It had been destroyed. And they needed to be able to dedicate it once again. And they were. And the way that they dedicated it was with light. And so there is a song that we sing at this time of Hanukkah, that begins, Banu Choshech Ligaresh, which means we came to banish darkness. In our hands we hold light and fire. Each of us is a small light, but together we are tremendously bright. The great darkness of COVID has descended across this globe, yet in our hands we hold the light and fire of vaccines that can banish this darkness. One by one, we can embody light through vaccination. And together we become an army of light so strong that we can banish COVID for good. And I know firsthand the darkness of COVID. My brother, Tim Wolf's precious light was cruelly extinguished when he died after COVID ravaged his body this summer. So in his name, in his honor, to carry on his light, I beg you. If you have not been vaccinated, please, please get vaccinated. If you need a booster, please access a booster. Your light is precious. As the Proverbs tell us, the soul of a human being is God's light. Let us banish the dark scourge of COVID with the light of vaccinations. Each of us is a small light, but together we are tremendously bright. It's my honor to invite Reverend William Grogan from the Chicago Archdiocese. Thank you for that kind introduction and greetings from Cardinal Supich to all of us who are gathered here and our profound gratitude for the efforts not only in this Cook County Health uh, effort, but also for all healthcare workers, both teachers as well as clinical providers for everything that has been done, especially for the poor amongst us. We are in the season of Advent and in these four weeks before Christmas, the key word is often waiting, we wait. And as every Catholic knows before, we in this time commune with eternity at mass to receive communion, we say and pray that we wait in joyful hope. We also sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, because Emmanuel, God with us, is the concrete experience in a flesh and blood way of hope. Our doctors, our nurses, our physician assistants, everyone from the business office through dietary, they are the concrete hope of the flesh and blood Jesus in our midst. And just as Jesus feeds us and heals us as our Savior that we recall Christmas, so too our colleagues, our brothers and sisters, our fellow citizens, we heal and nourish one another through the saving remedy of our vaccines. The Catholic teaching is very clear. There is no reasonable grounds but for a physical allergy that a person should not get the vaccine. And that is something the Catholic community wants every Catholic to hear. This is a way God acts in the creation. And so with all our colleagues, I want to affirm and ratify and encourage everyone get the shots. I've had my shots through Cook County Health, and and I've had my boosters at Walgreens or CVS or others. 
sites which are being put forward, whether our diverse community grasps or not, is a way that God is glorified in this creation. Now I want to say a few words in Spanish. Buenas tardes. El Cardenal Supech y el Papa Francesco le animan a vacunarse contra el virus COVID. El Papa Francesco, el Papa Emerito Benedicto y el Cardenal Supech ya han sido vacunados. Las vacunas son moralmente permisibles y ofrecen un reo de esperanza de que el mundo se unirá en nuestra humanidad común para lograr la salud y la sanación. Vacunese tan pronto como sea posible por su propia salud, por sus seres queridos, especialmente los chicos, los pequeñitos y los ancianos, y por el bien común. Comparta en los medios sociales, amigos queridos. And now I want to speak for folks who come from our Francophone countries, our Catholics from Haiti and parts of Africa. Mes frères et mes sœurs, c'est très important que pour vous pouvez recevoir la jab trois fois et aussi pour la flu. C'est très important et c'est la volonté de Dieu de, de, pour nous et pour spécialement les petits et les vieux. Merci. And now I want to introduce Iman Hassan Ali from the Mecca Center. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and greetings of uh, peace and blessings with all of you. I'm honored to be invited to speak to you all today. The preservation of life is one of the highest objectives of the religion of Islam. In the Quran, chapter 2, the Almighty God says, and do not seek distraction at your, your own hands. Sadly, there are millions of families who have suffered the pains of quarantine, isolation, hospitalization, and even death due to this pandemic. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, do not cause harm or return harm. Whoever harms others, God will harm him indeed. The permissibility of taking medicine to repel an existing disease or to prevent an expected one is a matter of consensus among the scholars of Islam. The point of argument is whether it is mandatory or not. And various scholars and fiqh councils have addressed this matter in detail. Most of them insist that taking medicine is mandatory when the disease may harm others. This may apply to the case of COVID-19, which is extremely contagious. In the Muslim community, we recognize the importance of keeping the mosques open for daily and weekly prayers, but not at the expense of human lives and sufferings. Those who want to attend the mosques must take all the precautions to protect themselves and to protect others. And COVID-19 vaccine is a matter of a great importance that goes beyond the interests of individuals to the well-being of the entire community. And in the respect, um, uh, public health institutions, such as uh, Cook County Department of uh, Public Health, represent the community in this matter. And so we should follow the instructions of our healthcare experts, who reminds us that failing to follow these measures will not only put you, your family, and your beloved ones uh, in danger, but it can also put the whole community in danger. We must do everything we can to help doctors, nurses, and first responders treat and overcome this very extremely bad disease. My message to my community is, the struggle to contain the coronavirus must be our number one priority. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, again he used an analogy of being all in one boat. Behavior that will sink our boat should not be met with silence. The well-being of all of us is at stake. Positive contribution should be expected from everyone to strengthen our social fabric and to improve the social order and environment. The Prophet, peace and, peace and blessings be upon him, said, none of you truly believes in God until he loves for his brother 
that which he loves for himself. As Muslims, we believe that no one can survive alone. We remind ourselves and each other more than 17 times a day when we recite the opening chapter of the Quran in Surah Al-Fatiha. In every and each rak'ah in our prayers, we say, Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. Even when you pray by yourself, you still need to say us, all of us. Together, let's all repeat, O oh God, guide us to the straight path. Together, let's make the right choices. And if you didn't get the vaccine yet, please go ahead and get your vaccine. Now, it's my honor to introduce Father uh, Spikas to speak, please. Good afternoon. It's with much joy that I greet you today during this Advent season. My name, of course, is Father Stamatios Fikas, and I am the Dean of the Annunciation Greek Orthodox Cathedral of the Metropolis of Chicago, and I'm here today representing His Eminence Metropolitan Nathaniel of Chicago, who was unable to be with us at this moment. Since the release of the first COVID-19 vaccine, people have turned to the church to ask for guidance in making the decision as whether to vaccinate. In an effort to provide a uniform and clear answer, the hierarchs of our Greek Orthodox Archdiocese in America, the Holy Eparchial Synod met to discuss concerns surrounding the vaccine. The Synod unanimously reaffirmed the Church's belief in vaccinations against this and all diseases. As our ecumenical patriarch reminded us in a recent patriarchal encyclical, the ancient Christianity to modern times, medical workers and healers have worked to provide aid to those plagued by physical illness with the sacrificial love of the crucified savior of their guiding light. The church has viewed their talents as an outpouring of God's love to bring healing to the body with a full hope that it would bring us all closer to the ultimate healer of both soul and body, our Lord himself. The church views the COVID-19 vaccine as an extension of this sentiment. As such, the Synod encourages everyone to get vaccinated against COVID-19 under the consolation, of course, of your medical provider. The Church looks at vaccinating against COVID-19 as an incredible expression of love for our families and each person we encounter in our daily lives. This vaccine not only offers protection for you, but also workers to protect those, works also to protect those around us. I offer these thoughts as a member of the church that recognizes that free will does and does not discriminate on the basis of vaccination status. All are always welcome in our church. Our Lord loves us so much that he gifted us the gift of free will. How we use that free will expresses how much we care for one another and ultimately God. I hope you choose freely to learn more about the vaccine from trusted medical advisors and practitioners. I also hope you open your heart in prayer and consideration in getting vaccinated this holiday season. Finally, I lovingly remind you to be cautious and considerate when gathering with your family and friends during this time. I know that navigating gatherings during this time can add extra challenges to an already, time, the already busy time of the year. Do your very best to consider the health of those around you and follow the recommendations set forth for us from our trusted health experts. I wish you a beautiful Christmas and holiday season filled with God's blessings in the new year. May we provide, may he provide us all with health, safety, happiness today and every day of our lives. It is my honor now to welcome to the podium Pastor Barry Tidwell. Madam President, health officials, and my colleagues in the faith, I stand before you today to make the appeal that the second greatest commandment is that you would love your neighbor as yourself. How do we love our neighbor as ourself? First of all, get vaccinated. It is so very important in this season of giving that we give the gift of love, which ultimately gives the gift of life. Those of us getting vaccinated, the first and the second, also getting the booster, will help those around us, our neighbors that live in the house with us, our neighbors that live next door with us, our neighbors that go to the grocery store and shop with us, and then more so, those that worship with us. Across all denominational barriers, 
that we give the gift of life and the gift of love during the season of giving, that we get vaccinated, know the importance of it, know the importance of giving back to those that you love so much. So as I conclude, I say to you that if you love as you say you do, get vaccinated. God bless you. Good afternoon, I'm Ms. Rocha, I'm the CEO for Cook County Health. Um, on behalf of our health system and our family here at Cook County Health, we're very pleased to be here with our religious and faith leaders and with our community as we get ready to celebrate our holiday season uh, and asking you to please, if you have not made the decision to get vaccinated, to take this moment to do so. Our holiday season has always been a time of remembrance and it's appropriate that we take the time to remember those that we have lost in the battle against COVID and then those that we still want to protect against the, vex against the virus and what we can do, which is to get vaccinated. It's also a time of light, of healing, and a time of giving. And one of the best things that we can do is to give to our community, to our family, to our loved ones, a world free of COVID. And that starts by getting as many people vaccinated as possible. Through this campaign, we have had many questions that were asked by our patients, and we fully understand that the achievement of health is a community endeavor, and it is a partnership between our patients and our, and our leaders and our clinical teams. You ask questions. The questions were asked, is this safe for me? We brought you doctors from almost every discipline and every faith that have told you that this is a safe uh, uh, action for you to take that it is a way that you can best safeguard yourself and your family. And our doctors have stood here at other press conferences before. Then still we had questions. Well, what about my faith? What about my religion? Is this the appropriate thing that I should take? Today we take one more step to have our religious leaders here who are with you joining and asking the call that our community get vaccinated. Our doctors say that it is safe. Our faith leaders say that it's an action that you can do completely within your practice of religion, who is here with us today. And our community leaders, our scientists, everyone has come forward and said that this is a safe action for you to take. And we do so and have asked the press to join us and have had many press events like today because it is important to communicate the information. Because here at Cook County Health, we know that we're not only battling the COVID virus, we're also battling the virus of misinformation. And we often hear still from individuals who say, well, this, this, uh, this vaccine's gonna give me COVID. This vaccine has magnetics, you're gonna attract me. It's against my religious principles, that's why I can't take it. Our goal is to always empower you with the information that you need to be safe. So we hope that in the remembrance and the celebration of our year and in the time of holiday season, think back to those events, think to the information we have provided, Take a moment if you have not been vaccinated and hopefully through the information that we have provided, uh, through the presentation today from our faith leaders as well as anyone else or any questions that you have, or uh, even going back to our websites and our information if you need additional information. Our commitment is to give you the facts, to give you information so that you make the safe choice for you and your family. And we hope this holiday season that that is what you do. Unas pocas uh, de palabras en español. Quiero comenzar para apoyando el liderazgo de nuestro presidente del condado, President Precuenco, por teniendo estos eventos aquí con nosotros. Ese tiempo de, de festiva es un tiempo de nuestra fe, es un tiempo de nuestra comunidad y un tiempo para recordar qué estamos celebrando cuando traemos el año para un, pa un fin este, este día. Y es un tiempo que nosotros podemos trabajar con nuestra comunidad. Podemos pensar cómo podemos apoyar y a luchar para avanzar la salud de nuestra familia. Y ese paso comienza con ganando nuestra vacuna en nuestra comunidad. Si no han tomado la vacuna porque tienen preguntas, esos eventos nosotros estamos teniendo con usted es un tiempo para recordar qué son esas preguntas y para traer la información que ustedes necesitan para su familia. Nosotros hemos oído que hay gente que tiene preguntas de nuestra salud, si la, va, la vacuna es algo que pueden tomar y avanzar su salud. Hemos tenido eventos como estos donde nuestros doctores y doctoras nos han dicho que es algo que nosotros podemos hacer que es seguro y es algo que podemos tener uh, sin, uh, sin, sin uh, 
tener uh, un tema que algo va a pasar con ganando la vacuna, que es algo muy bueno para nuestra salud para tomar la vacuna. También uh, hemos oído que hay probantes en nuestra religión, que si es algo, si tomamos la vacuna, si es algo que podemos hacer en acuerdo con nuestra religión, con nuestra fe. En este uh, evento aquí tenemos los líderes de nuestra fe que están diciendo que uh, la decisión para tomar una vacuna es algo que pueden tomar en, 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 compli en compliancia con nuestra fe, que no es algo que es en contra de nuestra religión, es algo que podemos hacer y que con más es algo que avanza nuestra fe, porque encarando la vacuna también pasamos uh, el seguro de salud a todos que están en nuestra pro próxima uh, área. Y es algo que podemos hacer para poder ayudar a todos. So, en ese tiempo, eh, si celebran uh, Feliz Navidades, Hanukkah uh, o, otro, uh, o, o Kwanzaa o otros tiempos de felicidades, por favor, tomen un tiempo de dar el regalo de tomar su vacuna a nuestra familia. Es algo que podemos hacer para avanzar nuestra salud y ojalá atraer un fin a COVID-19. Thank you so much and wish you very, very uh, happy holidays from our family to yours. All right, we're going to take questions. We're going to start with the reporters in the room. Jason from Sun-Times, you want to go? Um, I was wondering with the news of the new variant Uh, how should people be reacting to it? I know there's a lot of emotions around it, but what do you encourage people to uh, react to the news? I guess I would say the same thing I've been saying for a year and a half, which is we have to listen to our healthcare professionals and today, of course, our faith leaders. Um, we need to be vaccinated. If you've been vaccinated, get your booster. And the message always is wear your mask, wash your hands. You know, it's. It's really critical that we pay attention not just to our own health, but the health of our communities. And the best way we can be uh, good citizens is to get vaccinated. Anything else, Jason? No, that's fine. Channel 7, do you have anything? Oh, uh, yeah. um, as a county, are you guys concerned about the uh, low percentage of people who have gotten their booster so far? Well, um, we're going to continue to encourage people to get vaccinated and to get their booster shots. Um, as we heard earlier, um, we began um, press conferences around the vaccine with our healthcare professionals, encouraging people um, to take their advice, take the, the advice of their doctors and get vaccinated. Um, we've included and encouraged uh, our faith leadership to join us in this effort to get people to be vaccinated, as you saw today. We have a a, a, quite a breadth of uh, faith leaders here today encouraging people to be vaccinated. We're going to continue to deliver that message in every way that we can. All right, anything else? All right, I know we have TTW on the line. Would you like to go? Yeah, I know this has touched on a little bit already, but other precautions people should be taking this holiday season when thinking about gathering with family or friends or attending, you know, this year, this year is the return of a lot of large outdoor holiday markets and such drawing large crowds, too. Uh, Dr. Rubin, you want to say anything about that? I mean, the, the same rules are in place that have been all along, but we need to be better in following them which means, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> indoors, please mask, whether you've been <coughs> vaccinated or not. If you're going to be in a holiday event and you're not vaccinated, please get tested. Get tested three or four days before the event and on the morning of the event if possible. For large outside gatherings, even though the risk of contracting COVID is much, much less in outdoor spaces, if you are indeed in these outdoor holiday markets, I would suggest go early or go late where the crowds are not as intense. Try to maintain that physical distancing and even though masks are not necessarily required outdoors, if you're going to be in that kind of an outdoor close pack situation of an event, a holiday market, a holiday concert, a tree lighting, wear your mask please and try to maintain a physical distance as best as possible. 